Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new here, my name is Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland. And on my YouTube channel, I feature content that's generally focused on knitting and spinning. In this week's episode of what I like to call the Thread to Mend podcast, uh, where I generally share with you the things that I'm making in real time, I have one exciting new project to share. As you might know, if you've tuned in to recent podcast videos, I purchased some birthday yarn with your support from my most recent pattern release of the Kingston cardigan. I purchased eight 50 gram skeins of Brooklyn Tweed's Arbor yarn. It's a DK weight worsted spun yarn. It's a three ply construction made with targi wool and it's completely manufactured and grown in the United States. Um, they're even specific to which state the wool is sourced, spun, dyed, and distributed, which I think is really cool. And it gives um, some transparency to the production of their yarns, which I really enjoy. Um, I also found Brooklyn Tweed's marketing to be very on point. The materials that went into packaging my order and, um, and its full delivery just were very intentional and very cool. And I was really surprised with just the quality of the marketing materials. Like for instance, um, I, I think they, they threw in a shade card, which was really exciting. I didn't anticipate that. Um, I got a birthday sticker, um, which was really a pleasant surprise. It's like cute little holographic sticker. And there was a coaster, um, with a sample of another type of yarn that they sell. And on the coaster was a pattern to knit a swatch for a coaster, which I just thought was really ingenious and cute. Like they're giving you a coaster and the yarn to swatch it up and feel a fabric that you might enjoy. Anyway, I just thought that was really smart. The yarn that I've worked most of Brooklyn Tweeds is actually this piece here. <laughs> Um, I've knit a hat using the same yarn. I really love that hat. It's super warm. It's super squishy. It has held up really well. I haven't worn it a whole lot because I don't generally wear hats, um, but I really love the end product and I feel like it holds up really well over time. It hasn't pilled to the degree other things have. Um, worn for about the same amount of time. The worsted spun quality of the three ply Arbor yarn does make it more resilient than other yarns. Um, having three plies makes it more structured and therefore have less opportunities for the fibers to kind of break because they're securely um, spun and held together nice and tight. Um, and then the fact that all the fibers of a worsted prep are in a single direction, they are less prone to breakage and just general pilling. One of the reasons why I really like Arbor is that it has the, those qualities of a workhorse yarn, but it still feels very luxury. I don't think that this yarn is spun necessarily tight. I think it has a really, really solid and good balance to it, but I think that the quality of the fiber, maybe the length of the staple of the fiber, and just the general, um, I, I'm guessing that the fiber is handled a little bit more gently than the fiber would be in the manufacturing process of something like Cascade 220 or other workhorse yarns. It's a workhorse because it's three ply and it's worsted spun. Um, still total luxury. So I'm really enjoying the process of working with this. And I've talked about how, um, oh wow, there's cat hair all over. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Not as much of a cat lady as I seem. I know, I know that I am and I'm in denial, but um, I just, you know, I got a lot of cats in my life. So I'm gonna insert a little clip of me with a cat right now while I sip my coffee.
Let me know in a comment below if you can see the sweat accumulating on my upper lip as I continue the process of this video. It's a hot day here in Maryland and um, I'm sweating a little bit, but I probably shouldn't have worn jeans today. So um, I guess it's my own fault. All right, so here is the beginnings of my new cardigan. I'm gonna try her on even though I don't have quite the length I think I need on my little cable. I really like this. Let me get my hair out of the way. So here we have the beginning yoke. And I talked about my anxiety in uh, choosing thin stripes and the amount of ends to weave in. I think I found a really good hack, <laughs> which is not really that ingenious, but it is simply, it's actually on this side, um, carrying the yarn up the side. Because this is not a shawl, this is not something that you're gonna necessarily see the inside in terms of wearing the garment. And specifically because we are going to pick up and knit a button band to avoid having to weave in so many ends with the abundance of very thin two row stripes, I decided I was going to carry the yarn up the side because um, you do pick up and work into the bar between the very first stitch and the second stitch of that row um, every two or three rows, um, every three or four rows, I think. Um, I forget my gauge. But, um, I'm gonna try maneuvering my yarn in a way that will also pick up that extra little strip of yarn so that when you're looking at the inside of the button band, hopefully this um, extra yarn here will be obscured as well. So um, fingers crossed. If I do anything out of the ordinary, I will create a tutorial for it to share with you all the entire process. And I have begun drafting the pattern and grading the pattern. I do think I'm going to uh, create a similarly shaped cardigan um, as I did for the Kingston, but I think that I'm going to make the upper arm diameter a little more standard and a little less deep in the yoke to accommodate that. Um, for me, with the Kingston, I really wanted a deep yoke and wide sleeve because it's worsted weight yarn. Um, I wanted it to be a looser fitting garment. Because this is a DK weight yarn, I'm knitting it with a slightly looser gauge to give a really light fabric, um, one that has a little bit more movement, and I feel like will work really well with a more standard fit type of shoulder and sleeve. So the yoke is going to fit, but it's not going to be deep and the sleeves are going to fit, but they're not going to be wide. It's just going to be a more basic cardigan. And I am going to still incorporate my kind of signature shape that I love. And I add to almost every garment that I knit. I add decreases at the side body towards the waist because my bust is nowhere near the width of my waist at the narrowest point. I realize that might not be for everyone, but those decreases are always optional. So they're there if you want them. They're not if you don't. These stripes make me so happy and they're fun to work because every so often you get to switch to like the third color. <laughs> um, the brown is worked between each repeat of the contrast one and two colors. So it just has this very vintage vibe. I'm really like, I get more and more excited about it as I work it. Um, and I could keep it simple with a very basic brown button band, but I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to make the button band interesting too. I think I'm going to, I'm gonna take this cardigan that's already like turned up to like an eight in terms of busyness and I'm gonna dial it all the way up to 11. I think that's just what it needs. I think that that's what's gonna make this pattern not just a basic raglan and make it unique enough that maybe someone should purchase it even if they already own a basic raglan cardigan and a DK weight yarn. Originally when I cast on this project, I was using a different increase um, technique. I think I was just doing like knit front back on the side of um, 
on both sides of a stitch marker. I think that's the increase in Kate Davies Ducat, which I've knit multiple times with solid color yarn and I really liked. Um, but I was not a fan of that technique with the multiple colors and the way that they just showed up from row to row. It was giving a bit of a pearl bump moment and it just stuck out really strange to me. So I ripped it out and I went to my favorite um, approach to increasing the sleeves um, with a stitch between two stitches actually uh, between the increases. I like to use make one right, make one left. And this is the progress I've made so far on my new striped cardigan using Brooklyn Tweed's Arbor yarn. Um, I will leave the um, color names in the description box below if you're interested to know which colors I chose. Um, but if you're thinking about maybe working up, up this pattern or another one like it in the future, if you want to just take the stripe inspiration and apply it elsewhere, I would definitely recommend choosing your favorite neutral, which uh, would be worked in place of the brown, and then pick your favorite color in two shades and use those as the two contrasts and you'll get the same effect um, where you have something kind of holding the ground of uh, the background or even you know the foreground whatever they're kind of interchangeable and then your favorite color is kind of radiating between stripes um, or you know maybe you have an absolute favorite color and then you have a second favorite color and you choose one for the main and then two shades of your other for the ripple effect. It doesn't have to be a neutral. I don't always think of brown as a neutral, but it is mostly the neutral I turn towards in my wardrobe because if I'm not wearing denim, I'm usually wearing some shade of, of taupey, like neutral. I don't wear a lot of black because I just can't keep it clean. I have, cat hair that shows up everywhere in my life. I forgot to update you on my bangs last week. I I was asking you all if I should cut my bangs in the week prior and many of you said no don't which I appreciate. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I cut my bangs even before my premiere. <laughs> I knew I said I wouldn't but I did. I couldn't stop myself. I, I think on Saturday when I made the podcast, I straightened my hair and it just felt like the right time to cut my bangs, which you probably didn't even realize I did because I barely did. I already had curtain bangs um, and I just kind of trimmed them up and I guess I, I uh, increased the kind of density of the bangs. Sorry, I have hair on my lip gloss. Um, but I, I just cut like more hair around my face they're not really bangy bangs. Um, and I didn't really style my hair to wear it back, but I tried to just make sure that the hair that's cut shorter than my the length of my hair is just a little bit more cleaned up. And in last week's video, I asked if you all would be interested in a closet cleanup and I'm gonna record that. I just don't have the time today. I'm thinking I might devote tomorrow to working on that project and capturing footage of that process for you so I can maybe edit another video to upload to my channel. I, if I don't include it inside of next week's podcast, I might just do a bonus upload. So you're going to have to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification for that. Um, so please do that if you're interested. I haven't been spinning any yarn since I last showed you my new skein of hand spun. Um, but I do have prepared another batch of fiber to spin what I think might be the last skein I need for a sweater project. Um, I have a pile of this fiber sitting on my dining room table, just looking at me, waiting for me to comb it and spin it up. I'm just not in a super rush, I guess. I mean, we're in July right now, so the garden and general life is kind of taking a bigger priority this part of the year right now. I will insert a garden tour moment for you now. It's been a whole week since I've spent any time out here in the garden and there's a lot of cleaning up to do. 
things are a bit of a jungle and I want to give you a little tour. I did clean the concrete last Sunday. I put a lot of time and effort into getting her into tip top shape and I have a couple things I'm excited to show you. First things first is the cucumbers. I don't think I showed you these last week, but they've started giving us fruits in recent weeks. Here's my hand for scale. You can see that they're quite large. I've been harvesting at least one a day. I've been throwing them into my smoothies, which I really enjoy. And it seems like the front cattle panel always has the best luck growing veg. The one straight under this um, cherry tree here gets a little bit too much shade to really get the same amount of growth on it. But I think next year, I'm gonna try to plant more beans. It looks like very few, if any, beans actually germinated on this side. It might've just been too shaded. Looks like we got a few over on this side. But we have some long beans growing up this cattle panel. We have plenty. I can see more than a few bean plants here. And I think we might have, I don't know if any beans actually sprung up on this side of the cattle panel on the second one. On the third cattle panel, we have beans on the left side as well. I'm not sure that I planted any on the right side. Knowing I have that rose bush there, I would like to create a little space for. But the cucumbers have been a lot of fun. And the other surprise I have to share with you is this cool little gourd. I, um, I purchased this gourd in um, the fall of last year. I threw it in the compost when it was done. And I have lots of little gourds. I'm gonna, I've already eaten a few of them. I let this one over ripen. And that's typically how you find them in the store and they get really hard but when they're young you can pierce the skin and you can eat the skins and they're tasty it's like a, a more firm summer squash so i'm really enjoying that little discovery i didn't know that you could really eat those plants i'm guessing you know what i'm guessing they probably don't distribute squash like those in stores because they probably get so ripe so quick that before you know it, it's a it's a gourd that's only good for decor. <laughs> that's my guess. So if you're able to grow them from seed, then you can eat them young enough that they're tasty and delicious. And that is a little bit of a theme here in our garden because we do have three pawpaw trees, which is a fruit. It tastes tropical, but it grows in cooler climates. And um, this is the one in the middle of the yard. And I've, I've told Brian, if he's gonna have three pawpaw trees, he needs to keep one of them a dwarf size so that I have some sun exposure remaining in the yard. So the two pawpaws, we have one right here. You can see it popping out from under the black raspberries. And then another one growing parallel to the cattle panel. Those ones are gonna grow up nice and tall, just inside of the power lines. So we have power lines with the forsythia and the fig tree. The fig tree has really exploded in height this year. Maybe we'll get some figs next year. That would be nice. Not sure about that, but it could happen. And, um, yep. So, it's just as much as I love the beauty of all of this growth I want to contain it and um, clean it it could it could use a little cleaning up but I just have so many ideas now that I see things where they are that I want to change but I have to wait until the fall like for instance I thought I would have and actually I did but I I gave a few to neighbors so the space that's empty I would have had full of uh, 
coleus, but I, I had a plan to kind of fill out the front of that bed with coleus, and then I abandoned it immediately before it even started, and I don't know why I did that. And I don't know if I'm going to repeat the coleus intention next year or not. Um, those coleus plants are ones that I saved from last summer. I took cuttings and kept them alive over winter, which was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. And I think I'm going to do it again, but on a different scale. I tried to go big, and I realized that I have to repropagate them at least a second time before the spring over winter. Otherwise, they get a little bit root bound. Um, so I'm probably going to get one big container and grow a lot and then propagate that into many more. So that's my coleus plan for the winter of 2022. I also have a pumpkin growing. She is a little girl but she's a big plant, so maybe we'll get another one. I hope we do. I hope we get another pumpkin, because I just think that that's so much fun. It's a huge plant to give me just one fruit. Uh, but speaking of fruits, here's an update on the peaches. They're putting on a lot of color. I expect that they'll get a little bit bigger before they're ready. We'll probably have a lot of small fruits this year. I probably should have taken more off of that branch so that I would have more bigger fruit. But I had that excitement of being a first time fruit tree person. I, I didn't listen to the internet and take all the fruits off. I let them all stay on and I should have just let a few stay on. But uh, you know, you live and you learn. And um, I'm really excited to taste a peach, even if it's small. I think next year we'll have better peaches. Anyway, oh, I also lost a sunflower. She fell over the other day. It wasn't even raining. I don't know what happened. It just fell over. <laughs> I need to, I need to clean that up because she is really putting a lot of pressure and shade on a bunch of plants that don't need that right now. Um, let's see. So she's got to go, but I don't have my clippers right now to take care of it at this moment. I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. Um, I started a new job that has been really exciting. I'm really loving it so much. The owner and I and another part-time person uh, work in this really cute old home up in Hunt Valley. It's like a very cookie cutter standalone house, like a old, not Victorian style, but um, you know, similar era moment in, in time. And, um, and it's just, uh, it's just us. It's just a very small team of women. And, um, it's really, it's like a little puzzle every day. I'm just like sorting little puzzles, putting charges and payments into categories in QuickBooks and reconciling statements month after month and just filing digital data points for reporting and it's just easy and fun um and it takes a it takes an incredible amount of focus which i feel like my knitting and spinning has like provided me in my life like i there's nothing that i do in my day-to-day -day existence um that requires that same amount of focus that I feel like I've practiced a lot with my knitting and just determination. You know, you really have to sit down and plug in and get going. It's the same thing. And so part of me thinks that's maybe why I haven't been in the mode to knit after work because I've just been focusing for so much all day. I'm not interested in anything else. I think maybe because I'm drafting a new pattern and I'm careful to really think it through and write it down. And of course, just like working a pattern, there's steps where for a moment, I don't have to think for the next 10 rounds, but I know I need to remind myself by that 10th round, it's time to really think critically again. I just haven't been working on 
that project, the one I'm most excited about. I think if I were smart, I would pull back out of hibernation my nearly completed slip stravaganza shawl and at least work on a single row each night. I think I'm going to prescribe myself that effort because I do want to keep knitting. I don't want to let it completely fall to the furthest back burner as it has this past week. But I'm in that learning curve process where what is very somewhat simple is a little bit more tedious than it will be with practice. I know that with practice, I'm just going to get, it's just going to get faster, easier, less of a intense um, focus. Uh, so I'm going to tell myself <laughs> Can't guarantee it's going to happen, but I'm going to tell myself that it's time I work on this while the moment is right. And wouldn't it be nice to have this to wear in the winter? It is more like a spring type of thing in terms of like pastels, but I think that the dark gray really anchors the color story enough that this could probably be worn in any cool season. Um, so maybe I'll finish this before winter and have it to wear at the office. Oh, I just slipped all these stitches off. Anyway, yeah, so this is huge, isn't it? I definitely want to commit to the, there's two versions in the pattern. You can have more rows of the chevron at the bottom or fewer, and I'm going with more um, because I just feel like with this unique design more is more and I just want to incorporate as much as my hand spun into this project as possible. I have so many random like 50 gram skeins of hand spun laying around. I don't need more of them <laughs> except maybe I do for some type of uh, scrappy project. I don't know. Um, I've been telling, speaking, speaking of uh, scrappy projects, uh, I just reminded myself I haven't cast on the shirt design I said I was going to last week. I think I still might, but um, I've been telling myself forever and ever that I'm going to knit uh, one of those shifty cowls. Um, a lovely viewer even gifted me that pattern many months ago, I think years ago now, and I couldn't wrap my head around, you know what I did? I packed the yarn and the needles and the project for a road trip like I was gonna cast it on and work it in the car. I couldn't wrap my brain around the instructions and and where I began the process of working the pattern. I couldn't conceptualize it in my mind with all of the stimulation of being on a trip. Um, I think that was a horrible idea and I would never encourage anybody to, to cast on a new project in the car while traveling. Um, just stay up really late the night before and cast it on, get going. Once you have the pattern repeat down, then pack it. But if you're still struggling to recall basic simple principles of the actual pattern, I would bring something way more simple. I don't think it's a super complicated pattern, but there is a stitch there's a there's a stitch pattern to the texture of it that I just couldn't understand at the time while traveling. I think something was throwing me off. I, I have not knit a lot of shawls, to be frank. I mean, the slip extravaganza shawl, I graduated from like elementary school to middle school on the shawl front. Um, so I know more about I-cord edging than I ever did and maybe slip stitch patterning with the mosaic um, moment in that pattern. Actually, there's many moments of slip, st slip stitches in that slip stravaganza. I think I'm ready to knit the, the shifty cowl, um, which would be nice, I think, to have in the winter to have a new accessory to throw on. I have accessories that I knit previously that I'm still excited to wear, like Ella Gordon's Radiant star cowl is something that I worked up at the um, tail end of last winter. I did get some wear out of it. So I try to roller skate 
all year long. As long as there's not rain or snow on the ground, I am roller skating. It is my ritual of movement. It is how I stay healthy and it's how I stay happy because exercise gives endorphins and endorphins change your brain chemistry and your brain chemistry um, will shift your mood. And when I roller skate, I just get into the best mood. And so all of that to say, I have a puffy uh, goose down red zip up jacket that I wear in the winter. And my Radiant Star cowl is like the perfect combination. I'm looking forward to the cool weather so much. Can you tell? But uh, it's July and I'm talking about my goose down coat. What I really need to start thinking about is what I'm going to wear to Rhinebeck, which is right around the corner. This week's candle has been brought to you by Marshalls. I picked her up for $7.99. Um, she retails for much more than that, which I think is the most exciting thing about shopping at Marshalls is just getting super awesome deals. I feel like this is a jar I could definitely use again. Um, just turn it around so that the label isn't exposed and maybe put it in a drawer or something to hold like lipsticks or lip gloss or something. I don't know. Um, but I really love recycling nice containers like this one for drawer organization. I think that that's really one great way to reuse something you might otherwise throw away. So I'm really happy with that. She's burning now. The fragrance is like, I can see why it's on sale. It's not the most amazing. It's uh, It was described as patchouli and currant. Um, and I don't know what I smell except a little bit of a powdery essence. It's not my favorite candle, but I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying having it lit. I don't know what else to say about that. There's really not much more to say. Um, what I need to be thinking about is what I'm going to wear to Rhinebeck, which is two and a half months away, I guess three months away, because we're in late July and it's late October, I think. Is it mid-October? I would say we're maybe 10 weeks away. And some people are starting to cast on and work their Rhinebeck sweaters. Some people are coming out with sweater patterns for Rhinebeck in coming weeks. I don't think I, you know what? What if I were to put this, oh, you know what? Okay. Hmm. It didn't occur to me that I could be wearing my striped cardigan to Rhinebeck. I'm guessing if I have it in testing by end of summer like I wanted to, why wouldn't I wear it? Maybe I will. Maybe I'm going to, I'm going to, I feel re-inspired now to continue working on this because how else am I going to get it in testing any sooner? I don't know what I'm thinking anyway. That's going to be it for this week's episode of the Thread to Mend podcast. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find me as Taylor Knits on TikTok. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on this little teeny corner of the internet. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much growing my channel here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, do please consider subscribing to my channel. It would mean so much to me to see you join us here. And once again, I want to thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and that you take care.